Hey guys, my name is Ken and welcome to the start of this new series, A Beginner's Guide to Making iPhone Games, where I'll be teaching you all the things you need to know to start making iPhone games. For the first lesson, we'll be going through some of the things that we'll learn throughout this series and some of the things you'll need to start. This series is intended for people who have never programmed before, so if you've ever wanted to make an iPhone game but never knew where to start, this will be the perfect series for you. If you ever have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So what exactly will we be learning? First, we'll be going through some beginner programming concepts. We'll start off with some of the basics and then gradually learn more and more throughout the series. Hopefully by the end, you guys will see that programming isn't that hard to learn at all. We're also going to be learning the basics of making a mobile game. This will include things like how to draw something on the screen, how to make things move around, and how to react when the user is touching the screen. To get into a bit of the details, the programming language we'll be learning is called Swift, and it's a new programming language created by Apple. And their intention with this new language is to make the development process simpler, as well as making code easier to understand. We're also going to be taking advantage of something called SpriteKit. SpriteKit is a framework, or essentially a programming toolbox, that Apple released to help developers make games. You'll notice that the two things we'll be learning were both created by Apple. And I think it's because they recognize the potential in mobile gaming and they're doing everything they can to help developers. So now is the perfect time to learn. With these two tools, Swift and SpriteKit, you'll be making games in no time. Now for this series, we're going to be creating a game from scratch and we're going to be recreating one of the classics in terms of mobile games. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's Snake. For those of you that aren't old enough to remember, Snake was one of the very first popular mobile games. In the early days of mobile phones, Nokia ruled the market. And this game, Snake, would come out with every device that Nokia produced, including the one you see on the screen. It was one of the very first mobile games I've ever played, and we're going to be recreating this on an iPhone. So you may be wondering, why are we bothering with this old game? Well first, this game actually covers a lot of the fundamentals in terms of game development. There are a lot of concepts that apply to games even now, so there are a lot of things that we can learn from it. Snake itself is also very simple to make. There aren't too many elements on screen and there aren't too many things to do, so we can break up these concepts one by one and build the game one step at a time. Plus, you'll get a taste of what it takes to make a game from start to finish. By the end, you'll have a complete game that you can play with and show off to your friends. Being able to finish projects is a very important skill to have when it comes to game development. A lot of people get stuck trying to start games over and over again and they never end up finishing a game. So it's very important to start training yourselves to complete something from start to finish. When you finish a project, you'll be able to take all the lessons you've learned and apply it to your next project. And slowly but surely, you'll get better at game development. And you know what? Snake isn't a very exciting game. So hopefully, after you finish this series, you'll be inspired to learn more and make your own games. So what are some of the things we'll need to start the series? Well, first you're gonna need something that runs the OS X operating system. And in this case, we're gonna be using Yosemite, which is the latest version as of today. The good thing about OS X is that upgrades are free. So if you're using an older version, chances are you'll be able to upgrade to Yosemite for free. If you're looking to buy something so that you can run OS X, a cheap option would be a Mac mini. It's basically a small desktop computer and it's relatively cheap and you can get the price down even more if you don't mind buying refurbished or secondhand items. Next we'll need to download Xcode. Xcode is a free app from Apple that we'll be using. It's an app that allows developers to make Mac or iPhone apps. It also comes with useful tools like a simulator to help with your development process. I'll put a link in the description to where you can download this and you can also find it on the Mac App Store. Lastly, if you want to put your game on an actual device, like an iPhone or an iPad, you'll have to sign up for the Apple Developer Program. It's $99 per year, but it's completely optional as there's a simulator that we can use to test our game. 
If this is your first time as a developer, I would recommend that you put it off until you are serious about releasing a game and need to start testing on actual devices. There's no point in paying for something that you don't need right now. So that's about it for this lesson. Go ahead and download Xcode and I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking forward to this series, be sure to leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to get the latest updates to new tutorials.